Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna investigate the fair value of Bitcoin and how overvalued we may get at the peak of the next market cycle. If you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So if you guys watched the last two or three videos that I did on Bitcoin, they were on uh, logarithmic regression analysis. And, and this one will be two, but we're looking at something slightly different. And the reason we're doing this is, I, I've talked about this on the channel a few times, but in the last few videos, I talked about the fair value of Bitcoin. And, and I think a lot of people were confused by that. I got a lot of messages asking me what I was talking about when I was referring to the fair value on the other regression lines. And it's a, it's a fair question because I, I simply did not say how I derived this fair value in, in, the, in the last few videos, though I have talked about it in the past. So in this video, we're just gonna talk about the fair value and, and look at some projections from there. So the first chart we have here is the price of Bitcoin versus time, but you should note that this is a logarithmic scale. A common comment I see is the chart, the price chart looks weird. Well, you have to recognize this is a logarithmic scale. So this is 10,000, this is 100,000. Each major tick is 10x, so $10, $100, $1,000. So minor ticks, this will be a major tick, 10,000. The next one up is 20,000, then 30, then 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then 100. So each major tick is 100 or uh, 10x apart. So what we can do is we can say, you know what? There's a lot of bubbles that occur with Bitcoin. So let's isolate what we might consider to be quote unquote non-bubble data. And it is somewhat complicated how I arrived at what I considered to be non-bubble data, but I've highlighted for your convenience what I did end up deciding was non-bubble data for the purposes of this logarithmic regression fit. So you can see those highlighted in red. The last time I did this fit, was in early 2019. So the, the fit was fit to data only through, you could say the very end of, of the bear market. And I think this is useful stopping there and using that to project forward to until we get to the next bear market, okay? So it only fit data up until this point, but as you'll see, it's done a pretty good job of, of continuing to, um, to stay reliable. If we overlay, the fit, the regression fit to this data, this is what you get. You, you might also notice that I overlaid these white vertical lines. These are the halvings. So these are the Bitcoin halvings. We've had three of them so far, one in 2012, one in 2016, and one in 2020. Now let's add a tolerance window and also extend it out a few years. So this is the is the chart you might often see me using on TradingView. This is of course is not TradingView, but on TradingView you'll often see this regression band that I that I use a lot. This is where it's coming from. So it's just this is the 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 primary fit, and then we've added just a tolerance window to to that fit. And you can see we've poked our head above this you know, um, accumulation window. If we, if we use the red band to be our, our theoretical reaccumulation zone over the macro scale, you can see that we have recently just barely exited the, the fair value regression band. Now, one of the things we can do is, is take the, the, look at the percent difference between the price and the fair value. And this is what you get. So we're just taking the price minus the log line over the log line. And then this is a percent. You can see it goes all the way up to 10,000% and all the way down to 10 to the minus two. So 10 to the zero would be 1%. This would be 0 0.1%, 0 0.00 um, or 0.01%. One thing that you should also note is that this is the absolute value. Okay, so whether it's undervalued, whether we're below it or above it by 10%, it will still show up as 10% here. To try to get an idea of what's going on, you can look at these three major peaks and know that they correspond to these three major peaks. This slight sub peak before the major one was this one right here. And the way that we get this, um, again, is just by, by taking the price, minus the log line, dividing it by the log line. So to some degree, this is kind of like a hidden trend that doesn't necessarily pop up at you if you were just looking at the price of Bitcoin on TradingView. But if you if you really dig in and, and look at some other types of analysis, you'll see some macro trend lines that are, are somewhat hidden in the price of Bitcoin. So from here, we can say, you know, if it's within 10% of the regression line, 
it tends to be, historically speaking, a really good buying opportunity. And that is that goes for whether it's undervalued by 10% or even overvalued by 10%. Buying Bitcoin when it's within 10% of the fair value uh, has historically been a, a great opportunity. And we, we've talked about this time and time again. We talked about it over here. Um, and when we had this major dip in, in 2020 in March, this was yet another incredible buying opportunity for Bitcoin. And you might say, well, hindsight's 2020. This isn't hindsight. I mean, we talked about this even at the time. Um, so the other thing we note is this macro trend line that, that pops out. And, and over the macro scale, you can see that we are decreasing. Remember, this is a logarithmic scale. Okay, this is a logarithmic scale. It's important to remember. So this is our general trend and, and our, you know, what I would project out would be a, a continued move up into, into somewhere in this region over here. Of course, it could come earlier. I've said before many times that I could see the peak coming the end of 2022. It doesn't have to be 2023. It could theoretically be in 2022. If I'm wrong, it could be earlier than that, right? There's always a chance that I'm wrong. There's no guarantee that I'm right. So just keep this in mind. But the, the nice thing is wherever we do peak, if it happens in say 2021, 2022, 2023, or 2024, wherever it does happen, this would be an interesting chart to, to keep an eye on because once we get up into this band here, it might be an indication that the top is is in or that we're getting close to being in because you can see we we actually have respected this, this trend line fairly well over the last decade. So if we get up into this regime again, it might be time to say, you know what, it's been a fun ride, but at some point it might be good to take profits. Um, but it's not financial advice. If we extend this out, this is, you know, this could theoretically happen. It could also do something like this where it comes back down. You might say, well, does this mean that Bitcoin has to crash? Not necessarily. Remember, the, the regression band, as you can see here, is a monotonically increasing function. So even if the price of Bitcoin were just to go sideways, eventually we would become undervalued again because we're comparing the price to a monotonically increasing function. Um, and, and so that's just something that, that you need to consider. It doesn't mean it has to crash. Of course, Bitcoin will have many corrections along the way, but most likely, but it does not have to crash to get back to being undervalued. It could just go sideways and get back to being undervalued because we're always comparing it to a monotonically increasing function. Now, if we if we continue, we can say, well, where does this put us? Let's say, let's suppose we come up to this region in a few years and draw a horizontal line and say, you know what? It looks like we might be 250% overvalued at that point. If it happens earlier, will be even more overvalued as compared to the regression line if we come up into this band. But let's just suppose that it happens in say 2023 and that we are 250% overvalued. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, let's go out to say 2023. What would be the fair value at the time? Looks like the fair value for Bitcoin in 2023 will be approximately $40,000, okay? So if it's approximately $40,000 is the fair value and it's overvalued by 250%, then this suggests that the peak for Bitcoin could be approximately $140,000. We'll quickly do that math if, if, if you um, are, are not sure how we got there. So if it's 40,000, the fair value is 40,000, then a 100% overvaluation would put it at $80,000 or 2X. A 200% overvaluation would put it at $120,000. So 250% would put it at 140,000. So if the fair value is $40,000 in 2023, and we're overvalued by 250%, then our peak could be at approximately $140,000. Of course, give or take a few K, what's a few K among friends? The next point to, to, to consider is well, what would happen after that? Well, if our halving is earlier, is say early 2024, you can note that the halving is getting earlier and earlier each each four years. So in 2012, it was at the end of 2012. 2016, it was in July. 2020, it was in May. In 2024, it could be in March. It could be, you know, it could, it'll be earlier in the year, most likely. So one thing to consider in terms of a theoretical bear market after the next blow off top is that 
this is the fair value. This is what I mentioned in the, in the other Bitcoin videos, regression using the fair value at the halving. People got confused or like, what does that mean? You can see that at the halvings, the price of Bitcoin was at its fair value. And so if, if history repeats and we're at our fair value at the next halving in 2024, then maybe Bitcoin retraces back down to around 40 to $50,000, wherever the fair value is at exactly that time and continues on its merry way. Okay, again, we could peak sooner than 2023. We could peak in 2022. We could also peak later than, than, than 2023. We could peak in 2024. However, just recognize that wherever we do peak, it will be useful to, to use this type of analysis to figure out how we're overvalued. So if we, if we peak sooner, we'll be overvalued more, but remember the fair value will be lower. So the peak, depending on how overvalued we are and what the fair value is, could be lower, even though it might be overvalued by a higher amount. So then if we, if we just make a few more um, random lines on the chart, you can see this is our general trend where the, over the macro scale, it does appear that the cycles are, are, are taking longer. And a lot of people like to say, well, how come I don't talk about more, more news, more events? Again, you know, yeah, I understand institutional investors. I'm just not buying into the hype that institutional investors are going to all rush into the market in 2021. And at the end of 2021, it's going to come all crashing down again. I think it's going to be a, a slower process and more money is going to come in over, over several years. I mean, to some degree, this is a good thing, right? I mean, it's a slower, more methodical move up if that happens. Um, again, if it does peak in 2021, the key indicator, again, would be to say, you know what? If we get back up into this band, it might be time to say, okay, maybe it's peaking earlier than we thought or later than we thought. Um, so again, I talk about lengthening cycles. I think lengthening cycles are true. Even in the midst of a pump, I get a lot more comments saying that, no, we're going to 100K next year. Let's be a little bit more pragmatic. We'll be ready for it if it happens next year. If it happens next year and we go up into this band, still gonna make a lot of money. Um, but if it happens later, then we're going to be ready for it. And we're not gonna necessarily say, you know what, just because it didn't peak at the end of 2021 doesn't mean the party's over because the data never suggested, realistically speaking, that it was going to peak then anyways. Um, and so if you if you wanna throw you know institutional investors at me and say, well, that's going to speed it up, I don't think so. I, I think that that money, we needed that money all along to make the next push. And, and we're just on course, the same course that, that we've always been on. Um, and remember, we can always have bubbles. Short-term bubbles are always a thing. Uh, I made a video a few days ago talking about a short-term, a, a bubble for Bitcoin um, in terms of this most recent bubble and people saying, oh, this isn't a bubble. Remember, it's a short-term bubble. We had plenty of those last market cycle where we had 20 to 40% correction. So we have little bubbles, they pop, and then they're all within the course of a major bubble. And you can see we had a, a significant bubble in 2019 that took us to 14K. We were overvalued by quite a lot back then, like a several hundred percent overvalued compared to the fair value because at the time the fair value was only a few thousand dollars. Um, so remember, short-term bubbles can exist. We could go to 20K in the short term. Do I think a sustainable 20K would be held in the short term? No, I don't. But it doesn't mean we can't go there. I would not have, I certainly would, would not have thought we would have gone to 14K in 2019. Certainly would not have thought that. But bubbles are possible. Bubbles happen. It's Bitcoin. You know, they happen. And if it's not, if it's not what you're thinking, if it's not what you thought was going to happen, then build a bridge and get over it, right? Because that's just what happens with Bitcoin. It goes through bubbles whenever it feels like it, and and you can't you can't really control that. Um, so the, the the last thing I, I just want to show is is this general trend here, right? You can see our our slopes, uh, and of course it depends on the aspect ratio. But as measured from bottom to top, you can see that we are are flattening out a bit, and so I would expect the next one to look something like that. Okay. So I hope this bit video has been informative. We've done a lot of logarithmic regression videos of Bitcoin recently, and I'm, I'm hoping that by, by doing several in a row, everyone's kind of on board with where the analysis is coming from so you guys better understand it. Remember, if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel so you can follow along. We do frequent updates of this. The next, uh, I don't know if it'll be the next video, but at least I do the next video or one of the ones in the, in the near future. I'm going to be looking at this, but for Ethereum. Okay, so you don't want to miss that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. We'll talk about why we think that Ethereum is one market cycle behind Bitcoin in terms of its volatility. We'll, we'll compare it to, to some of these charts by Bitcoin. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. 
Also, check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Finally, if you want access to the premium list, you can go to intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to weekly premium reports, weekly premium videos, a private Telegram alert channel where I post a ton of charts, like every single day for the most part. I don't think I've missed it yet. Um, also a private Telegram chat room that I moderate, as well as a risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade. And also you'll get access to a lot of these trading view indicators. So if you're, if you're wanting the trading view indicators, know that they are included, not all of them, I'm adding them right now. A lot of them are included in the, in the premium list. And you can pay with crypto for 12 months and get a 15% discount. And again, there's also lifetime memberships. Um, I don't advertise them as much, but there are uh, there are lifetime memberships. And if you want access to that, you can always just go to the um, the, the contact page, the, the contact us page down here and, and inquire about that if you're wanting a lifetime membership. So that'll wrap it up for the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. We're going to be here every step of the way. I think this is going to be a fun journey over the next few years. So subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time. Bye.